Welcome back to our Chapel Chats. Uh, today, uh, we are going to be speaking about episode 11 of the Wild Goose series, and I have Nancy Dewey who's with us. So Nancy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what you do here? Hi, Father. Um, yeah, well, I came on board here on staff about two years ago, and I'm the Director of Evangelization. Uh, I've been blessed to work in the church in a couple of different roles. Um, over the years, I started initially as a youth minister and mm -hmm. absolutely love that. And then um, as a director of evangelization and also a director of faith formation. And then now here as a director of evangelization. So I'm really excited to be here and it's been a good two years and looking forward to the next year. That's right. Well, I know that you're a big fan of the Wild Goose series. I and am, You've run yes. this in your previous parish. And so Correct. today's episode that we're going to just briefly talk about is on the Spirit's conviction, the Spirit convicts. Right? And it's not so much a conviction in terms of, of, of wanting to do something. It's about conviction of sin. Mm -hmm. So what were maybe what's the main thing that kind of stuck out for you in this episode? Well, I would just say, as I watched the episode, I, I just felt the truth of it in my own life. Mm -hmm. And how, um, as I progressed in my relationship with Jesus, how the Holy Spirit just kind of came up and started nudging and just kind of showing me, areas um, in my own life that I needed to confess. And I really love, I'm, I'm a big fan of Father Dave Pavanka to begin with. And so when he really talked about it being a relationship, um, I think that that's the most important thing. Like as your relationship in that personal way grows with Jesus and you understand how you've offended him in any way, um, it just kind of lays heavy on your heart mm -hmm. um, to know that you are loved so much by Jesus mm -hmm. and that you've offended him. Um, just can really add to a heaviness in your heart and you don't want to have that. Um, you want to be free of that. So that's what um, I've known in, and seen in my own life and that's why I'm so grateful, you know, for as they speak about the sacrament of confession. Yeah, and it, it's amazing. The, the distinction that Father David makes is so important for the Christian life because it's amazing to see sin in terms of, or it's helpful to see sin in terms of a relationship rather than just simply breaking a law, mm -hmm. right? And for so many Christians, they see sin as just simply this impersonal, I, I broke this rule, I broke this law. And while there, there could be a technic, they could be technically right, they sinned, they're kind of missing the point. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that really strikes me about the Sacrament of Reconciliation is that it's called, since the Second Vatican Council, you know, penance, confession, but the technical term is the Sacrament of Reconciliation, being mm -hmm. reconciled back to God. And there's a personal relational quality to that, that when I'm sinning, I'm not just simply breaking some impersonal law. Like I'm, I'm turning away from my, my beloved. I'm turning away from love. Right. I'm choosing to live beneath my dignity. Right? So this, this beautiful way of talking about uh, the personal re relationship is just so helpful for us to understand why sin matters in the first place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, um, growing up Catholic, um, for the majority of my life, it was just kind of a routine thing that I would try to do at Easter and Christmas is go to the, receive the sacrament. But once I had that shift in my heart and I knew Jesus personally, like the thought of offending him or actually understanding when I did offend him or realizing that I did offend him, um, man, I just wanted to run to the sacrament because I don't want to be in that state of grace. One of the biggest distinctions he makes, and it's a, it's a distinction that I make all the time, is the difference between the Spirit's conviction of sin versus an accusation or condemnation of sin. And I will sometimes will pray this very thing with penitents. You know, if they, they don't know what their sin is, we just ask the Holy Spirit to come and convict us mm -hmm. uh, of our sin and, and recognize the difference between what the Spirit's conviction feels like and the Spirit's, or I'm sorry, the enemy and mm -hmm. the, the, the devil, his, his condemnation and accusation. Right. Uh, and, and I think that's one of the most important things to remember because even very devout people will feel this, con this sharp condemnation and accusation and they'll think it's holy. Uh, and in reality, it's often the enemy wanting to discourage us. Yes. You know, so what do you think about that in people's lives in terms of trying to live a Christian life and feeling this condemnation, this accusation, and, uh, and people thinking it to be the conviction of the Spirit? Yeah, I, I think the enemy is really good at convicting us that we're sinners, that we're bad people, that there's shame associated with it. Um, even after we've gone to confession and we've confessed mm -hmm. the sins, he likes to come back and yep. still go in there and attack you and make you feel unworthy. Mm. And um, for me, I remember a real powerful time where I happened to be on a pilgrimage. And I 
went to this very holy spot and it was the first time I'd ever been on a pilgrimage in my life. So the whole time I was going feeling unworthy, that I was a sinner, like who am I to come to this holy spot? And when I actually got to the holy spot, I really felt unworthy. Mm. And I can just remember crying when I got there. And then I heard the most beautiful voice and it said, your sins have been forgiven. And for that, there is great joy. Well, the tears came a lot more, but the reality was the enemy was trying to tell me, you are not worthy to be That's here. Right. You shouldn't be here. But you know, the Holy Spirit really is yeah. the one that convicted me. Your sins are forgiven. Yeah. It, there's so much joy. You belong here. Yeah. And it was really the opening of a, of a beautiful experience and a pilgrimage. Yeah, there's nothing like experiencing love in the midst of the place of, of shame and feeling of unworthiness. Mm -hmm. I mean, God chooses to love us. Even while we were yet sinners, He sent His Son to mm -hmm. die for us, yes. right? And so this is, this is the good news of the gospel, right? And right. It's, it's precisely in that place where God chooses to love us that He sets us free. And one of the things that I find challenging as a priest is is trying to talk about the good news of God's saving love and His mercy to sometimes people who aren't all that aware of their sin, right? Because the last thing that I want to do is to condemn and to accuse people. And yet, as Father Pavanka was saying, he said, it's a good thing that people know what their sin is. I mean, it's actually a very healthy thing. The, Sp the Holy Spirit wants to reveal sin because without the revelation of sin, it's almost like you, you can't really appreciate the solution to sin. It's like someone going to a doctor and the doctor is saying, I don't really want to tell you that you're not, you're not healthy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you what your sickness is because I'm afraid you might get upset at me. Well, if a doctor is not willing to help diagnose uh, someone or tell them what the sin is, then the doctor is really not a good doctor mm -hmm. because the person can die from it. And it, as, as Father Pavanka says, as scripture says, if we don't let go of our sin, we don't repent of our sin, we will die in our sin. And sin is the rejection of love. Mm -hmm. And that's the definition of hell, yeah. right? So as a preacher, it's very difficult for me. Like, I want to show people that, you know, God has come to save us from sin, but I also, uh, I, so, but I don't want to tell people about their sin all the time because that's very discouraging. But the fact is, is that when sin is revealed to us in our life and we know who God is, then that's actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it's like, oh, Jesus, come and save me from this. Right. But right. sometimes people experience someone pointing out their sin as a very unpleasant experience, right? I'm the same way. I don't want, I don't want people telling me where my sin is. Mm -hmm. But deep down, I really do. Because if I don't know my sin, uh, then I'm, gonna, I'm not going to repent from it. And I'm going to be blind to it. And I'll end up hurting people that I love. Uh, and that's really what the blindness of sin is. And so uh, one of the things I just, I hope and I hope and I hope and I pray that all of us can be okay when God reveals our sin to us. Because that's actually a merciful thing. He's revealing to us maybe a, a malignant tumor that, we, that we've had in our life. He's like, don't worry if I'm revealing it to you because I have the cure. Mm -hmm. I have my grace, my mercy can, can root that out. Don't be afraid of the diagnosis because what I've offered to you is a healing of everything yeah. in your life. Yeah. You know, I have a story, um, I'm full of stories, so, but I just remember one recently, um, someone that had been away from the church for 30 years, and I had spoke to them on numerous occasions, and this person literally said, I just know I'm going to hell. Mm -hmm. I know that my sins are not going to be forgiven. Well, a major crisis happened, and I invited him to come to a holy hour of adoration where there was confession there, and he was in a a place where he was open and I said why didn't you just get in that confession line and thank goodness you know the priest really spent time with him and he was in there for quite a while but the fact is he came out so full of joy yeah. so full of freedom and this was someone who truly believed there was not forgiveness for him yeah. so uh, his experience it's just, it's of that amazing. day was just so amazing yeah yeah I find that when people don't know when they don't really believe that Jesus is that merciful, mm -hmm. they spend much of their life running away from him. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and when people get close to him, they become aware of their sin. It's like getting into the light. The closer we get to the light, the bright light, the more we see how dirty we are, right? There, there's a natural part of becoming aware of how heavy our sins are. But when we understand what the light is there for, mm -hmm. what Jesus' love is there for, he, he's there to resolve that. Yeah. We no longer have to run. And so many people are running today because they don't know who he is. Mm -hmm. They've written off that God is merciful because of some lie that the enemy has placed in their heart that, that God really doesn't love them, that God really isn't there for them, that he's, it's, 
you know, that, that there's, there's no hope. Right. And yet it's our task as Christians to proclaim the incredible love of God, that He is love, He is mercy, and that in Him is the fullness of redemption. Uh, and so I hope that people who watch this, this episode of The Wild Goose had this just greater conviction that God is here to save us from sin, and that it's, it's okay to know your sin because it's actually precisely in that that God meets us in His love. Yeah, I think the other aspect that I really love about the Holy Spirit is He's also the consoler, right? Mm. So um, it may be difficult to face the fact that you've sinned or have cre you know, really had some bad choices in your past. But between the mercy of Jesus and the consoling love of the Holy Spirit, um, you're going to be okay. Absolutely. And I, as a priest, have the, the incredible privilege of hearing confessions. Yes. It's one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> I've never ever met someone who'd been to confession and say, you know what, I, I wish I wouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have given all my sin. I wish I would not. No one says that. No. But I have had many people say, I wish I would have come earlier. I've been carrying this weight and this burden and this condemnation and this shame upon myself. And I wish I would have come earlier because in the confessional as a priest, I get to see Jesus come and lift all of that off of their shoulders. Yeah. And, uh, and what a yeah, gift. I call it the um, confession smile. Like yeah. you can see people walk out of the confessional and there's just joy. You know, there definitely is a change that went yeah. on in that confessional. A supernatural change went Absolutely. on in that confessional. Yeah. It's really um, a, a great gift that we have. And the Holy Spirit grants it to us in the church. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you, Nancy, for being with us today. We're going to say a final prayer. Do you want to say a final prayer for us? Sure, Closing prayer? sure. Um, yeah, so Holy Spirit, I just ask you to help all the people that are watching this video, um, just to convict them mm. um, of what you want them to know about the mercy of Jesus. And I pray that our drive-through confessions or our confessions that we're having now are going to be full. We're going to have long lines, but um, that you are going to do great and mighty things in that confessional with everybody that walks through there, regardless if they've been gone for 30 years or um, they just made a poor choice this week and they need to come back into the loving arms of Jesus. Um, so Holy Spirit, just come with your joy and your beauty and your love upon all those who are watching this video and um, may they just come into the loving arms of Jesus. We ask this all in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen.